Welcome back to Kevin Makes Cool Things. I'm Kevin, and today I'm making a tensegrity structure for my grandma. This is actually a really old project for me. Back in March 2020, I was thinking about starting to post projects to YouTube more regularly. Meanwhile, this new virus was starting to make headlines. I got word that my state was going to have a lockdown, so with just hours to spare, I ran out to the store and bought paint and supplies for a number of different projects, including this one. I wanted to do this because my grandma has been a fan of 3D printing for years, and we'll generally talk about it when we're catching up. She's also the one that bought me this 3D printer. She gave me some money for either my birthday or Christmas, I can't remember which, and I used that to buy a 3D printer kit which eventually led me to starting this channel. So for a number of reasons, I wanted to 3D printer something cool, and a tensegrity structure, which is basically a 3D optical illusion, seemed like a much better choice than something like a Benchy. My first attempt at this years ago did not go well. I kind of put this project to the side because COVID turned out to be a bigger deal than expected, and I wasn't able to visit her. Finally, I'm going to see her, so I wanted to come back to this and do it upright. Let's start by looking at what I messed up the first time around. I can't find the files right now, but here are the notes I put together as part of my first attempt. Keep in mind that this was years ago, and I was just starting out. At this point, I had only just figured out how to use trig functions and loops to create some crazy twisting designs in OpenSCAD. I wanted to see how far I could push it. I had also just purchased some Stuart Semple paint which is supposed to be the purest colors you can get. I found them underwhelming in tests I did later on, but at this point, I was eager to try them out. I am cringing showing you this. I'm not an expert now by any means, but I've done 30 plus projects since this point, and there's a lot I would do differently, even just at this stage. If I was doing this design again now, I probably would have done it up like this. The originals didn't have measurements, so I'm doing some of this from memory. My big issue with my last sketch was that it didn't have shading or outlines, so it did a decent job of showing how the colors went together, but from a practical standpoint, it's hard for me to tell what I'm looking at. The colors and the twisting design was meant to look trippy, but looking back, it just looks garish. This cross-section was the biggest issue. I wanted to paint the insides black so the thread could seemingly emerge from nowhere, which I still think is an interesting idea, but my designs for this were impractical. The tolerances were too small for me to print nicely, especially a few years ago, when my printer wasn't as well calibrated. I need to use supports for this, and they gummed up these spaces really badly. I probably could have cleaned it up if these had been straight lines, but since everything twisted, I couldn't get a clear shot at this. This was one of the first times that I realized that I need to consider sanding and finishing as part of the design stage. Even if everything else had worked out, I probably wouldn't have gotten a nice crisp edge along this channel, which would have messed up my plans for painting this. If I really wanted to recreate this design, I probably could. I think the trick would be dividing it in half and printing it so no supports are needed, and then connecting the pieces together afterwards. Sanding would still be a challenge, but I could probably make it work. That wasn't an issue in this case though, and I was all too happy to start over and go for something that was a better fit with my current tastes. I started designing a simpler version, which I could do a really nice job finishing. Last time, I tried to pack too much into the design. Doing some trippy twisty print is a cool idea, and tensegrity structures are really neat, but trying to put both of them together in a single project actually made things less impactful because there was too much going on. I wanted to go for something understated and somewhat elegant. Printing was uneventful. These pieces were simple and small, so it went pretty quickly. I sat down with my trusty safety glasses and prepared to peel off the supports. I started gently pulling on this, and this happened. I was pretty annoyed at this point, but I can always glue this back on. I got back into it and tried working on the other piece when... Yep, I'm two for two. I decided to go back to the drawing board and create something that was a little bit more substantial so it didn't snap like this. 
After doing the math on a piece of scratch paper, I went back into Blender and worked on this model. Printing did not go well this time around. I was running a little bit low on black filament for the first piece, and ended up finishing that print with this much remaining. I'm all for not wasting filament, but this is cutting it a little too close for comfort. I switched over to some white filament, which is all I had lying around, and decided this was a great opportunity to break out my new dry box. In the background, I've been working on a number of enhancements for my 3D printer, including a dry box to protect my filament from moisture. This tensegrity structure was supposed to be a pretty quick video, so I was going to release a second video focused on this dry box. That can't really happen because this was a spectacular failure. I spent an entire day fiddling with this, but eventually I left the room for maybe 10 minutes, and when I came back, my 3D printer had fallen off a table. As best I can figure it, the dry box somehow fell off the table, got wedged underneath, and then as my printer was pulling on a filament, it managed to leverage itself off the table and onto the floor. Thankfully, everything still works, although I will have to go back to the drawing board with the dry box. Long story short, it took me two days and a lot of frustration to print two very simple pieces. After successfully removing the supports, I drilled out the holes. This ended up going a little bit smoother on the white one, so that's going to be the piece I try to put on top. I did rough sanding with my Dremel tool, applied wood filler, and then did some hand sanding. This was a delightfully simple process. Normally, I have crazy details that I need to work around with small files, but in this case, a couple minutes with some sandpaper and I was done. Afterwards, I applied some spray on sandable primer and I was ready for painting. Up to this point, I hadn't given too much thought to the updated color scheme. I knew I wanted to use the black embroidery thread I bought years ago for this project, if only as a matter of principle. If I was making this for myself, I probably would have painted both pieces silver, or maybe one piece silver and one piece gold. Metallic just felt like the right choice here. Since this is for my grandma, I asked around and heard she liked turquoise, so we started looking for some turquoise metallic paint. I did some searching and found that Folk Art has a metallic turquoise paint, which was exactly what I wanted, but on Amazon it was nearly $7. I generally see this for 3 bucks in stores, so this felt like a total ripoff. I chuckled to myself and wondered what junk would overpay like this, but then I checked my calendar and realized I wouldn't be able to get this project finished before my trip if I waited and went to the store myself. $7 later, this was on its way. As much as I'll grumble about the price, the paint worked really well. I've been using folk art metallic paints for years at this point, and I've never had a single issue. After letting everything dry, I went ahead and rigged this up. I was going to do some close-up footage and talk about all my tips and tricks for doing this, but I don't really have any. My plan going into this was to tie a pretty substantial knot at the bottom, and then tie a second small knot up here, where I thought the second knot would go. Then I could thread that through and use that small second knot as a guide for tying a more substantial knot. That did eventually work, but I had to redo this three or four times, so trial and error played a big part of my success. One thing I did learn is pay special attention to the central line. I recommend doing this first, because if you try to do it last, it will not work. Believe me, I try. This is also where most of the pressure is, so make sure your knots are especially substantial. There's a little bit of give to this embroidery thread, and two separate times I had my knot pull through this tiny hole, and I had to redo everything over again. That's pretty much it, and all I have left is to give this to my grandma. I'll post all the files on Thingiverse in case you want to make your own. As always, if you enjoyed the video, then give it a like or leave a comment, and if you want to see more of my work, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Until next month.